in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, News Gaonse, Malnadu TV India, Samvas Sarokar News, Bharat Post News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan. We are happy to inform that today, from today, we are starting a new weekly series, Thought of Leadership series. Crisis moments create opportunity. Problems and crises ignite our greatest creativity and thought leadership as it forces us to focus on things outside the norms. Thought leadership is influencing a narrative by understanding what needs to be done. A thought leader can be recognized as an authority in a specific field and whose expertise is sought and often rewarded that can be an expert, a historical figure or a wise person with worldly impact. In this series, we will ask straight questions and we expect straight answers from our guest. And in this series, we will have one guest and we will be asking the straight questions to him. And the topic is end of COVID, how and when? At a time when healthcare occupies center stage in national and international priority, and there is information overload, it is necessary to set the priorities right with insightful analysis of current scenario and way forward. And to answer my straight question, we have a very eminent guest with us, and he is Dr. Ramain Goyal. I welcome and introduce my guest, and he's Dr. Ramain Goyal. Dr. Ramain Goyal is a leading bariatric surgeon from Mumbai. He is the immediate past president of Indian Association of Gastrointestinal Endosurgeons, IAGES. He has recently conferred the honorary FRCS by Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh. He has published many research articles and book chapters and is editor of many scientific journals. During COVID times, he formulated national surgical and endoscopic COVID guidelines. He conducted COVID training programs for surgeons and family physicians. He also conducted a randomized control trial on the role of zinc in COVID patients. He did online consultation of COVID patients. He led a COVID task force of IAGES to distribute 50 lakhs worth aid material during first wave. Uh, welcome Dr. Ramen Goyal on our show. Dr. Ramen Goyal being the first thought leader in our this series, I am going to ask questions about the topic that is end of COVID, how and when. And I expect that you will give a straight answers without hiding anything so that our viewers will get to know the real facts. So I am starting the question. My first question to Dr. Goyal is, as per the reports, obesity and diabetes are one of the main reasons for COVID-related deaths. As a bariatric and diabetic senior surgeon, do you agree with this? Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Goyal, for this privilege of being the first guest on your new series, Thought Leadership Series. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great initiative because as you mentioned that there is so much information overload that clarity of thought is required in various fields, especially so in COVID. And what has happened is that over a period of time, last one, one and a half years, doctors are behaving like public and public is behaving like doctors because of the information that's available in the, in the media. And we need to remain clear about ro our roles. We should not be taking each other's roles. And since people know so much about COVID, I'll be talking today mostly about way forward, what will happen from now onwards, because everybody knows almost everything about COVID treatment, prevention, vaccines, because everything is available in public domain. As far as obesity and diabetes is concerned, now this is, an, this is a very important issue. Uh, I've been practicing obesity management for almost 21 years now, and I was president of National Obesity Association uh, in research of obesity in 2007 to 9. 
and this is one sub area which is which is uh, under represented or under discussed in our country primarily because there is so much poverty and malnutrition it is considered politically not correct to discuss about obesity in india uh, because naturally people say people are dying of hunger why should you why are you talking about obesity but the fact remains that there is a huge population of people in Uh, urban areas and even in rural areas who are putting on weight and it is being reflected that we are also very high in diabetes percentage india has somewhere you know the the state where you are sitting now or in tamil nadu uh, almost 20% of the population is diabetic and no country can afford this kind of Uh, diabetes percentage because even in us when it crossed 6% people was uh, the government started saying we can't afford managing diabetes in usa so i think obesity and diabetes are a major problem in, in our country now as far as covid is concerned it is now a very well known fact that people who are obese they have severe disease people who are obese more of them die than those who are thin now this has been established not only in india worldwide i mean when the first wave hit uh, usa and italy a lot more people died there because a lot more obese people died there uh, because there are obesity related complications which could be anything which could be diabetes which could be breathing difficulties which could be uh, managing a ventilator but more people are dying because they are obese and then second thing that you mentioned about diabetes yes diabetes is a as everybody has in india also knows is a major determinant but what we need to know is that now we are one and a half years into covid and there are a lot of literature scientific literature which has been published and it has has been shown that a one episode of uncontrolled blood sugar can also make the condition worse so if somebody has a covid and the sugars go up to 250 to 300 he he or she can suddenly deteriorate so it is not only a question of diabetes but it's a question of control of diabetes so it's important that doctors manage their diabetes manage their patients diabetes very closely most of these patients who are who are, are diabetic and if they have a covid it is better that they should be managed they are high risk patients they should preferably be managed in a hospital where their sugars can be checked more frequently and maybe they are put on insulin so that they their sugars remain under control uh, throughout the throughout the treatment otherwise they they suddenly develop a serious disease which could even go to the level of cytokine storm which everybody knows now so i think obesity and diabetes has a phenomenal role in covid uh, covid problem covid has affected every second household in india families are hurt scared and wondering what about daily new cases and covid deaths uh, in india and what about non covid patients in india so you know this is this is very tragic that so many people lost their lives and it's tragic for their families also because this is a this is a major major issue and we we need to uh, we need to take care of and support those families who have lost their near and dear ones i think the our country has been ravaged more than more than any other country you know uh, usa had had more numbers but the the severity and ferocity of the second wave uh, was much more than any other country has faced and the amount of deaths which have happened what about non covid patients okay so uh, this is a this is a issue that uh, patients are facing and uh, doctors are facing it now because there are people let's say a, a cancer patient who had a early cancer and got de delayed treatment either because uh, the travel was not allowed or could not approach a doctor in time or the cancer facility was not available cancer treatment facility was not available in his or her town uh fortunately hospitals like tata memorial hospital continued to work even during first wave and through the lockdown 
but many people who could travel to mumbai for the treatment with them could not come and they they are facing a problem because they probably have now advanced cancer and somewhere where they could have been uh, saved their lives could have been saved they cannot be saved same thing applies for so many things you know it applies for tuberculosis it applies for diabetes and they these are the people who are uh, who need help immediate help and fortunately what has happened is that people have lost uh, fear now uh, it's not a positive thing but lot of people are, have, do not have a fear of covid and i am seeing that patients are ready to come back to hospital even though doctors are still little concerned about their covid related risk so i think uh, it's a it's a very difficult situation and probably uh, uh, something that can be discussed in detail separately that how do we manage our non pandemic patients during a pandemic some countries like uh, uk divided the 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 care of pandemic patients versus non pandemic patients so they they took all pandemic patients in public sector and they allowed private hospitals to manage only non pandemic patients so uh, in a way and and these pay, patients who are going in private were were being paid by the government so they did a clear cut demarcation of where patient should be managed unfortunately because of the poor public health care system in india uh, this was not possible and we have a have a mixed management and in the process mostly the non non covid patients are suffering yes you rightly said dr goel because in uk the, the the nhs is very powerful management managing the health sector and that's why uh, the public sector hospitals are termed sometimes better than even the private hospitals there so that's why but it is a very uh, correct thing that they have the demarcation but in india because of the poor uh, health facilities in the public sector hospital is not possible anyway i think now the government will think and make a new policy how to be done because we don't know how now when the next waves will come or another pandemic will hit i think mr goel you know one thing that can be done is since the health related awareness is at its peak in our country for the first time people are interested to know what are, what are the health benefits the government gives government is so sensitized corporates are sensitized this is the right time to plan our national healthcare system for our country this is the right time to invest in it maybe uh, if you want we can have another program with you where we discuss what are the options how this should be taken forward because a uh, public healthcare system is is the need of the hour in our country and just building bridges and metros is not the infrastructure the, the major investment must be in the healthcare system and if we cannot do it now at the fag end of the pandemic we will probably never do it in our country uh, you are right uh, dr goel because we have the first national health policy in india that too in 1983 now after 1983 it was not revisited so until unless we will not uh, uh, refresh it with the current scenario it's not possible to be stick with the same policy uh, okay now my next question to you is will still have almost we still have almost 1 lakh new patients every day and states have started lifting lockdown i think yesterday it was about 80000 plus so approximately 1 lakhs but uh, states have already started uh, doing uh, lifting lockdown is it the right policy in context as experts are already talking about the third wave or the state should continue the lockdown till we will have all everyone is vaccinated and the third wave will not be there i think that's a that's a very important question uh, only china used lockdown to bring down the patients to zero all other countries used lockdown as a policy to protect their healthcare system so i think uh, what is important to realize is that lockdown is a, not a tool to bring the patient load to zero the disease is in the in the, in the society and lockdown must be used only to 
ensure that the healthcare system doesn't get overwhelmed. This time in the second wave, I'm not talking of what happened in first wave or what happened in past. In the second wave, the lockdown was used wisely in many states where suddenly the number of patients increased drastically and the hospitals ran out of bed or oxygen or drugs or doctors or nurses. So I think at the moment, as I see it in our country, Maharashtra has developed a wonderful policy, probably the, the best in the world, if I am allowed to say that, where we have a lockdown measures and not many people outside Maharashtra are aware of it, where we have predefined lockdown measures that if you're in a city, the, the positivity rate is above 5%, you are in level two city. If the oxygen beds are availability is more than 40%, then you are in level two city. And if you are, your positivity is 10%, then you are in level five city. And if oxygen beds availability is less than 20%, then you are in level six city. So there are clear cut defined criteria. And based on that, the district disaster management officer, DDMO, is allowed to enforce lockdown conditions. And lockdown conditions are defined by the level. So like Mumbai was in level three till yesterday, that means we could open our market from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and uh, on weekdays and the swimming pools and gyms and malls were not allowed to open. Now, if you are in level seven city or level five city, uh, markets don't open. So I think that the level of lockdown should be determined only by one criteria, availability of hospital beds and oxygen beds. And this is important to realize because somehow a narrative is being created that lockdown is the way to save the country. Lockdown is to save the patients. Lockdown is to ensure that every patient gets a hospital bed. No patient dies of shortage of oxygen. And thus, when you say whether third wave can come if you open the lockdown, Yes, third wave can come, fourth wave can come, but we cannot remain perpetually in lockdown. We are not China that uh, where uh, we can have a dictatorial rule. We have to open, we have to work and manage patients as they come. And as the, the infection rate in the society goes down, the lockdown opens and as the infection, uh, as the bed requirement goes, uh, becomes less and less, the uh, lockdown severity should imp, uh, increase. I think this is the way forward. And we can talk about third wave uh, uh, separately. You know, this is the topic of the thing. So I think we'll be talking about it again and again uh, during your questions. Okay. So uh, Dr. Goel, what you have mentioned is that the lockdown is to be decided and determined by on a district base, level basis, not on a nation basis or on a state basis at one time and they, there should be a criteria and the district authority should see how many beds are available right now and they can immediately impose the lockdown for a week then they can assess if the criteria as you have mentioned the availability of beds are available of the oxygen beds or the ventilators then they can bring it to the upgrade it to second level or first level depend but this has to be decided uh, on day-to-day -day basis or a weekly basis by the districts not by the states or by the go central government. Absolutely, and 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 based on certain defined transparent criteria, it cannot be on a whims and fancies of one uh, one leader or one officer or one health care leader. Uh, the, the, we must lay it down as it has been laid down by uh, by states, and the way center has decentralized that states manage their own lockdown. Similarly, states have to decentralize it in a, on a district level uh, because. Suppose in a village in a, or in a, in a taluka place, if there are no infections, why should that village remain in lockdown? Because some people in city, uh, in part, one particular city, there is, a, uh, there is a shortage of hospital beds. So I think gradual decentralization of de uh, decision making is the way forward uh, to, to uh, um, uh, you know, implement lockdown. Yes, I think the now all other states are following what Maharashtra has done, and that's why now they are opening accordingly. Thank you, doctor, for giving this reply. Now, my next question to you is, so much has been spoken about COVID treatment on WhatsApp universities and whatnot, whatnot, but 
even the government is changing the guidelines now and then almost every week some new guidelines we are hearing those uh, this jink is allowed jink is not allowed or uh, the, the uh, steam is allowed steam is not allowed or whatsoever they are saying remdes or whatsoever my question to you is guide why we cannot have a uniform treatment strategy or is it because that new new researches are giving every day new input and that's why the government has to change the guidelines okay i think this is a this is again a very important question very relevant in today's time uh first thing is to understand that why guidelines are being changed because as healthcare professionals we are learning as we are going through the pandemic so more research is coming and as research is coming the treatment protocols are changing we all know that my question is why it takes so long to change a guideline in our country if we if we are aware that things uh, the, that this drug should be used or should not be used guidelines should change few months earlier guidelines should have changed few months earlier because this is uh, and they should change based on the on scientific evidence and not by perception or pressure from the society as far as uniform strategy is concerned of course we should have a uniform strategy and the strategy is again based on the on the, the scientific inputs again i keep mentioning uk because i have i have connection with uk i know the nhs because my daughter works in, in nhs in the medicine the right from beginning they kept saying that zinc is not to be used right from beginning they did not allow many of the things that were allowed in our country and it was a laid down guidelines so they don't say what you cannot use they say this is the way treatment should be done and when you say why we cannot have uniform treatment guideline this is a problem area so some doctors in one one city are using a drug early because they have seen benefit from this and in other city they don't use it i can talk about each of the drugs separately if you if you have a question about that yes i But, have a question okay. i will ask you afterwards first so we, you we, just we will go on that so okay i think as a as a and another thing is that this tendency to maintain a to avoid fear in the society this tendency that we should not talk discuss real issues and try to cover it up so that the the people remain positive is not right we are a mature nation it is like president trump saying that uh, i i have hidden covid related problems because i did not wanted fear to spread in the nation but when he got replaced and the new president came very quickly they started talking science and they ensured that that the 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 vac country is vaccinated the real issues are discussed that masks are required uh, distancing is required so i think uh, understanding creating guidelines uniform policy is the need of the hour and that has to be done at a central level so uh, earlier i spoke on lockdown as a decentralized tool as far as treatment strategy is concerned that is the that is the responsibility of director general of health services of the country to come out with policies and a uniform guideline and that would have saved i was listening to to a young girl on one of the tv shows who lost her father who said that she bought a a remdesivir for 84000 rupees a vial now i'm not i can talk about remdesivir separately but what i'm saying is her father was already sick for 10 days and probably she he did not require remdesivir and this poor girl had to go in the market to buy that from all over and ultimately she lost her father so i think if there was a uniform treatment policy uh, at that time it has come now it has been modified recently now it, it uh, she would have been avoided trauma of find uh, running around and spending so much money i mean she would have probably lost her father otherwise also because he was so sick but at least this girl would have uh, not felt that that kind of trauma and when i'm talking about that girl i'm talking about so many people all over the country who have gone through the trauma when we are talking of numbers we are not talking of individuals and families who have faced this up close 
as a nation, we should be talking about them, not about 70, 80,000 people uh, who are getting infected. We should be talking about every person in the society who is going through the pain of managing a COVID relative in the family. Uh, doctor, although it's not related, uh, this question is not related to our this thing, but still I want to ask you, uh, it has come in the media that now the state governments or the high courts, not the state government, high courts are ordering the audit, death audit of the state, the hospitals death audits have been ordered by the high courts. And we have found that in uh, many cases, like in uh, Bihar, they have revised the death toll uh, and they, 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 they about 72% uh, deaths have been increased. And now it is auditing is going on in other states also on the direction of uh, the uh, uh, high court. Why it is happening in India? Is it a common thing in abroad also? Because the what media says or the reports are that if a patient is died after uh, a week or 10 days uh, once he was been treated by the in the COVID and then he died by the heart attack, he was not termed in the COVID patient a uh, death. So is it the same thing abroad, all over the world, or it is only in India? I think uh, this is this is not, uh, it is not even understandable. Why should the data be fudged? Uh, you know, uh, one can say that China, China did not report. This is all, all a narrative. Maybe they did not report, it's fine. But that does not give us a license to, to fudge our own data. Because when you fudge data, do you think people are blind or dumb or deaf? Everybody knows. Look at it. Today, our country is completely isolated. As, as a citizen, I cannot travel to almost the entire world. And I cannot go for, for any of the important reasons. And, and the whole world has shut us off even though we have fudged our data, how, how did it matter whether we had 400,000 patients a day or we had actually, whatever it is, I'm not suggesting numbers because it's controversial, but if it is 800,000 or a million patients a day, how did it matter? It doesn't matter. If we had uh, 4,000 deaths a day or we had 8,000 deaths a day, how did it matter? It doesn't matter. Ultimately, the, the people see through you. The world is so transparent and so connected that anybody can find out what is happening in our country sitting in US or anywhere else. And when you say that audit is being done, how do we know that this audit is real? I mean, I heard a, a leader from, uh, from the state who revised their uh, uh, data recently say that we, we appointed committees and they counted deaths. But on what criteria these deaths were counted? Did they include, as you say, people who died after two weeks with COVID-related complication? So I think we will probably never know uh, what was the extent of infection in India and extent of deaths. But looking forward, let's not be critical about what happened. Looking forward, a transparency in life is so important. It's not about data only. Transparency in life is so important because if you have correct data, then you can design our intervention manage strategy. Now, you can say that I am aware as, as the healthcare leader of the country, I am aware what is the actual number, but I'm not telling others. Okay, fine. But how will you implement a strategy if you cannot talk about your number? So I think uh, and how will you get input of wise people, as you said initially, people who are healthcare leaders to tell you, because if you are not sharing the numbers, how will the economy be planned if you do not know how many people in a village have died? How will you support them? So I think uh, it's very unfortunate. I'm not saying that it is only India specific, this data management, uh, but this is something that must be rectified on an urgent basis. I'm glad that many decisions are being taken, like we can talk about it, vaccination uh, reversal and uh, about uh, recent uh, change in guidelines. For that, I will I come to you again. Care yeah. of uh, data, data handling on a, on a daily basis in a transparent Okay. Way. Now I will come to the point which you have raised earlier about the medicines. 
See, I, I will I will name few medicines. Uh, then uh, you can uh, give your reply straight away. Jink, HCQ, Coronel, Remdesivir, 2DG, steroids, monoclonal antibodies, are so many things, uh, plasma therapy. Now, when all these things were there, tell me how, uh, uh, now and, and the guidelines are changing. Now you have mentioned about a girl who has lost her father because she purchased for 84,000. Now tell me if she wants to know who is responsible that uh, she has to spend so much money. If the guidelines would have been earlier uh, changed and would have mentioned very clearly these uh, injections are not required, she should have saved that money. Who is going to reimburse that money? Now this type of questions are there. But what is the correct position today about these medicines? Can you just highlight those things? I think you forgot to mention ivermectin as well. So uh, let's divide these, yeah. these uh, drugs into or, or supplements into two groups. The ones which are immunity boosters or preventive medicines and the treatment medicines. So let's say, let's talk about zinc. And I heard an expert on your program talking about zinc almost one more than one year back. And I was so taken, uh, uh, you know, I was so impressed that I read about it and I found that zinc works very well in viral infections. And I started prescribing it to my patients and I started consuming it myself as well. But then the, the, the real issue is there was no study because nobody had seen seen the role of zinc and its efficacy in SARS-CoV-2 or the COVID virus. So we mounted a, 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 a randomized control trial in Mumbai at Wokard Hospital, where we gave zinc to a group of patients and did not give zinc to another group of patients. And within a month, we could find out that zinc has no role to play way in reducing hospital stay or in reducing number of deaths. Now that study is under publication right now, but this is, this is and then uh, all those people, I could say that please don't take zinc. We, it has, and this has been established worldwide. Same thing is with HCQ, hydroxychloroquine. We all know how the president of the strongest nation uh, advocated it. And uh, many of us started taking it. So one thing was ignorance, ignorance at the beginning of the wave. And I don't blame anybody for that. We went by whatever we, we learned from the past literature. So zinc, HCQ, ivermectin, they were, they were the ones who were uh, thought to be effective. But then what happened? Within four to five months, there were studies or WHO said that HCQ is of no use or ivermectin should not be used. But then we kept seeing that state after state officially on their letterheads mentioned that everybody should take ivermectin as recently as three to four months back. Now, this is where the problem is. This is where the problem is that the, 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 the scientific temper, the, the, the missing, the scientific temper that is missing uh, is the reason why these problems are coming. If somebody who is a healthcare leader who is advising the government had said that this should be stopped somewhere in September, millions of people who took zinc, hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin from September till May this year would have, or October, I'm not going very specific, I'm talking policy, uh, would have been avoided the trauma and the expenditure on this and a false hope that this gives them any protection. You mentioned about coronal. Now, this is again uh, unique to our country that we are a coronal, which could have been a very good uh, tool overall, not about corona only, because it's an Ayurvedic product, which probably boosts immunity. I am not a not an Ayurvedic expert, but I trust people, though, those who have done, done the research, should have been shown and marketed as a, as, a, as a drug which can improve immunity over a period of time. 
immunity is not something that works by popping in two pills a day and saying that i i am now protected against corona or against anything so i think where we went wrong as far as coronal is concerned is the is the messaging and i am aware of states and after states which are buying this product to to give it to their their people and it's unfortunate i can't say anything more than that it's unfortunate that such kind of decisions are taken now as far as treatment medicines are concerned let's start with the most commonly discussed remdesivir now remdesivir has been uh, studies again have been done in west and we have to trust those studies because you cannot say west is wrong china is wrong every other country is wrong and only we are right so those studies have shown remdesivir the only benefit it gives is it reduces hospital stay so if somebody takes remdesivir the number of days in the hospital goes down but it has no death benefit now one can look it at either way one can look at it that remdesivir has no role to play and one can say that why hospital stay is going down so let's talk about remdesivir in two minutes more because i am glad that we have some time today in mumbai mumbai experience of physicians and an expert intensive care people is that if remdesivir is given early on day 2 or day 3 then people do not progress to severe disease remdesivir as per the experience of people in mumbai does not have any benefit if it is given after 7 days of disease now i remember i spoke to one of my relative in dehradun had uh, had this disease and i spoke to him and i said please ask your doctor to start remdesivir early so that you don't don't become severe he spoke to the doctor and doctor said what does doctor goel knows he is a surgeon you are not severe enough that we give remdesivir remdesivir probably has no role once you have a severe disease and most of us i also had covid and most of us doctors who get if they get infected we get admitted in hospital early and take remdesivir on day 2 day 3 for 5 days we remain in hospital only for rem- getting remdesivir now this is what i am saying is messaging issue It's two aspects of it one is because remdesivir is not available in the society you go on the media and say remdesivir should not be used i completely agree but give a complete message say remdesivir has no role to play if you have a severe disease second problem is remdesivir uh, uh communication so i found like like this dehradun doctor i found so many cities if you talk to some doctor there at say i took remdesivir early because the 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 best expert in mumbai says that you should take it early and it reduces hospital stay he says no 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 we we don't give remdesivir or we don't give uh, this particular medicine now this uniformity of approach can only come when you take away positivity from discussion when you say these are two reasons where remdesivir should be given and not after Seven days. This this does not say. And probably this is when I why I was mentioning that girl, that if her father already had this disease for seven days, probably she didn't. He did not require him to see it. And this is a a, a a failure of messaging. And this is where. And then what is happening is doctors from Mumbai are not talking to doctors in Dehradun or or doctors in Lucknow. there is no scientific discussion is happening all that discussion is happening is on media channels like yours or other channels and then somebody from the from one particular group says this is the way we will the remdesivir should be used or should not be used but have you taken opinion of people who are really treating covid patients have you seen what what are the benefits and this is the issue now as far as steroids are concerned nobody doubts that steroids have a role to play if person needs it but steroid should be given under medical management and this is this is nobody questions that as far as 2 dg is concerned now i i uh, don't i never wanted to talk about it but you mentioned it 2 dg dg is a drug which has been 
under research for more than 10 years it is not something new that has come out with our, from our defense organization but this time 2dg is a drug which has been researched by patanjali foundation by acharya balakrishna now that has not been mentioned anywhere and it has come as a drdo product which is being marketed and if you go online and check it out uh, the, they were only sponsors of the research which was done by patanjali foundation and already it has never been um, advocated anywhere in the world and we'll be very happy if this is effective but as a doctor people should see the published data and there is a, 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 a opacity about the data at the moment we hope that this will work but till that time this should be used only as a as a clinical trial protocol in one or two centers and not on the real patients in public life as far as monoclonal antibodies are concerned i think monoclonal antibodies are a game changer uh, it's approved very early in by fda in usa and has got approved in india recently and is available why it is a game changer i'll tell you and it's my perception and also the the how the literature says monoclonal antibodies can be used on mild and moderate patients so everybody knows today what is a mild and moderate patient it can be used on a outdoor basis unlike remdesivir so if i had covid i did not to have got admitted in hospital i could have gone to the hospital taken injection and came come back and it gives relief within 24 hours it restricts progression to severe disease so i think and when this narrative is being created that it's very expensive i think this is a wrong narrative it is a single dose product i am not advocating it but i'm just talking scientifically it's a single dose product uh, which costs 60000 rupees per patient it is much cheaper than remdesivir which is uh, now available which were available at a very high cost as we have discussed and it probably the hospitalization is not required so i think as far as these drugs that you mentioned i have overall covered if there is anything else i'll be happy to answer about the plasma therapy if you can say so plasma therapy again has been proved worldwide now that plasma therapy does not have much role to play but again as far as india is concerned in mumbai uh i know dr zari rodwadia who is a leading expert and who is contributing in big way in covid management he is on record to say plasma therapy is only effective it is if it is given within 3 to first 3 to 4 days the problem is hardly anybody has a severe disease in first 3 to 4 days hardly hardly anybody reaches hospital in first 3 to 4 days so this is what is required i remember the delhi government started a plasma bank now this is such a waste of effort when you do something it it gives a very good uh, message that uh, we are uh, we are proactive we are doing it but you are not realizing your time the effort of the people who are working on it and the money that is required and the false hope that you are giving to the society that this is working all this is a is a waste if that much energy and money has been spent on something more meaningful probably two lives would have been saved in one city and that that would be have been a biggest achievement of our covid management oh, oh okay doctor in this uh, do you mean to say in all these things what you have mentioned the main reason was the communication like plasma if the communication would have reached the initial first or second or third day it's effective or not similarly about the remdesivir you have mentioned you have mentioned about the steroids also don't you think it means the treatment should be decided by the doctors not by the non doctors player or or the state governments or the central government so there are two things happening i don't blame anybody here everybody is uh, <clears throat> is a beginner in pandemic management so there are two things how do we how do we learn about management of one particular cancer let's say lymphoma government doesn't decide that uh nobody talks about it so if i do some work in mumbai i present it on a platform where other people from other states also come and say dr goel we have also worked on it this is our experience and we share experience and we decide among doctors 
this is the way forward and that is how the disease protocols are established literature and discussion among doctors but what has happened there was a overdose of communication between government and public but there was a complete breakdown of communication between doctors and doctors so the communication channels between uh, of treatment because the, when the government or a policy is coming directly from center nobody can violate if a a a, a healthcare chief of let's say any state let's say uttaranchal or uttar pradesh or any other state, maharashtra gives a written directive that ivermectin has to be given taken by everybody what will a poor doctor do does will he go in jail by saying that i you should not take ivermectin which will be considered as a as a as a as a as a wrong decision by the doctor so i think the the authority is director general of health services he should have been in the forefront doctor should be encouraged to have interaction between them about the drug protocol so uh, intensive care from let's say mumbai expert from mumbai should be talking to intensive care experts from mathura or agra or every other city on a zoom platform you don't need to travel it it was so simple so i think the 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 communication went into a different direction and that put doctors on a defensive that we will only follow what we are being told and that led to a a situation where uh, where we 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 are at the moment but i'm glad that uh, this is being realized and corrective decisions are being taken okay now we are moving to the post covid complications doctor we have found that the many patients died to heart attack brain stroke and uh, many other diseases could they be avoided and why they have died because of the covid or because the according to the government data they have died because of the heart attack but as you know and now the uh, the even the high court has also directed do you think this is the reason is of the heart attack is one of the reason is the covid and it could have there we would have avoided this thing uh so there it's a very uh, difficult question to answer let me say for various reasons one is we must realize this is a novel virus no novel is not in terms of novelty novel is in terms of this virus goes into the lining of your blood vessels this enters lining of the blood vessels so this is the only virus which goes there and when it enters into lining of blood vessels blood vessels are everywhere blood vessels are in heart which we call as coronary arteries blood vessels are in kidneys blood vessels are in pancreas blood vessels are in brain so one hypothesis why i say hypothesis one hypothesis is that these linings because it goes in lining it causes inflammation and that is why people have high blood sugar during covid that's why people have heart attacks during covid or after covid or they have brain strokes or they can have kidney failure or they can have gangrene of intestine as they are coming now or they can have black fungus as people are talking so this is one very convenient way of explaining it but it is almost impossible to prove how do you get lining of blood vessel from the heart to check whether the virus was responsible inflammation was responsible for somebody's death so it's a very convenient hypothesis to explain the other hypothesis is and which is established is thrombus everybody knows in all over the world that covid causes clots and thrombosis everybody knows that and that can explain that probably these people had a heart attack because there was a clot in the blood vessels or it was a brain stroke because there was a clot in the heart uh, in the brain's blood vessel so that that is also another way of looking at it now the problem area again is and this is again unique to our country uh is there a protocol that every patient who is admitted or who is at home is assessed for their thrombosis potential that means because of covid am i at a higher risk of forming clots in my blood no everybody should be assessed 
even if he had symptoms only for one day this should be assessed i'll tell you by my own example i had fever only for 36 hours i was very early in second wave i was in february admitted for to get remdesivir and the physician there assessed my blood clotting profile and found that i have i am at a very high risk of a thrombus formation and till date i am taking blood thinners so that i don't get a heart attack and a brain stroke or a kidney failure now i have seen because you know i am working for an organization uh, which is providing free consultations all over the country so i am talking to patients who are being managed in west bengal in lucknow and different parts of the country and i talk to the patients that are you taking aspirin are you taking any blood thinner and you will be surprised at so many places even though their d dimers and other profile was assessed the after discharge they are not taking those medicines now i am not blaming the doctor it could be the patients who stop taking medicines on their own but the fact is that may increase the risk of a heart attack after surgery after after covid sorry and after covid recovery so and this can be now can this be avoided it can be avoided in two ways one is we should have a, a uniform protocol to assess simply how do you assess these one two three four d dimer a doppler whatever you want to do to find out whether the person has a high potential to form clots second thing is if the this is above this level this person should be given aspirin this person should be given blood thinner these are two different things clot formation in veins clot formation in arteries and you, you need to have different medicines aspirin doesn't replace blood thinners now this is something that doctor should be talking to doctors and getting implemented now having come to this stage can we find out whether these people are dying because of inflammation i mean we heard recently a 48 year old owner of a hotel chain died did he die because of inflammation or did he die of uh, of a uh, of a clot formation it is so simple that scientifically we can determine all those patients who have a heart attack and came to the hospital we simply need to find out their blood reports during their covid admission we simply need to find out whether they were taking blood thinners or an aspirin after that or not and if we can find this survey and this survey can be finished in one week it will not take six months one week we just need the authority to do it and somebody to do it implement it and in one week's time we can find out that if 100 people got heart attack and if 80 of them were not on blood thinner we know the answer how to avoid it in future but the problem is who will do it how do how do you get access to data of patients because this is so tightly controlled that it is impossible to break through the, the breakthrough access so if i want to find out uh, people who got heart attack in in let's say in uh, delhi i cannot access the the contacts of the patients i cannot access it so this is what is required a central quick scientific assessment of these people and probably we can probably i'm not saying i may be wrong but if what i believe that the blood thinners and uh, uh, and uh, aspirin could uh, few deaths might have been save uh, uh, avoided who knows okay now my next question regarding this only is about the black fungus as you have mentioned i did a program exclusively of black fungus and they are asked many questions and there were so many reasons and the, although the doctors try to give the answers but their answer is again that the search is not complete and the reasons which were given earlier or now also is diabetes steroids zinc steam uh, is industrial oxygen hygiene condition even mask but what is the real reason doctor okay i think these are each of these issues that you are raising are a matter of de debate on national channels for hours no but but one more thing yeah. why why only in india so much we have not seen after all covid is was there everywhere in the world across the world even the second wave was uh, there and but we have not received any such type of informations from uk or usa or any other countries mainly we are receiving in india 
the deaths uh, due to the black fungus so uh, first again i i want you to emphasize in your programs not only this future also the human side of this tragedy covid tragedy and black fungus tragedy black fungus is a nightmare a nightmare for patients and family because if somebody has a fungus which is here which has taken away an eye person will become blind on one side and it is happening so quickly and person requires surgery person requires medicine which are so expensive now what could be the reason as you mentioned eight or 10 i don't believe that everything together conspired to cause black fungus in our country there has to be something a one common thread or one common reason across the country because if everything conspired this doesn't explain why it is not happening in other countries i mean okay it, it may not happen in uk but why it's not happening in bangladesh why it's not happening in uh, other uh, economically uh, uh, lower countries so i i have always of a st- uh, belief that there is always a simple solution to a complex problem and there has to be a common thread running across these black fungus patients whether it's happening in maharashtra or delhi i think and this is again <laughs> you know it's a matter of and i am talking uh, in a different way because i have i have always been on the academic side this is something which can be sorted out in two days time you don't need to discuss it on tv channels anymore how it can be sorted out every government knows how many black fungus patients are there most of them are 100% of them are in hospitals we simply need to give them a survey it could be a google form where we say did did your relative received steroids which can be checked from the their discharge notes did they receive um, uh, did they receive uh, is he diabetic all those things that you mentioned and one of the thing that can be also checked did they receive industrial oxygen and if we get these survey forms within 2 hours i we can find out by a scientific assessment what is the common thread across these 15000 patients across the country now the reason why research is so important unfortunately i cannot help these people i mean uh, these people will ha- ha- are destined to have a complication and 40 to 50% deaths but if we know what is the common thread we can avoid it in future now is it known we don't know because if unless we say and that there is a element of responsibility fixation suppose it is found out that suppose hypothetically speaking that industrial oxygen was responsible at least in future we will not use our industrial oxygen and families will not suffer and this is why research is not needed is needed it may have a implication in terms of responsibility and cost to the government or to the the people responsible but that's a very small price to pay because do no harm is the first requirement of medicine so we must be talking openly about it bring out the facts and if it is diabetes we know then that diabetes is responsible and then we don't blame industrial oxygen but we must do a transparent and honest research and a survey and in 5 days time we can establish what was the response there is another reason which is not discussed where are these people coming from because i have not seen black fungus from our hospital which is a tertiary care hospital private hospital so is it happening from public sector hospitals is it happening in corporate hospitals are, are majority of patients coming from corporate hospitals or are they coming from small nursing homes we must know that there is nothing to hide about it because if hygiene is the issue we know what what needs to be corrected but if we have size six reasons to blame we we are shooting in dark and we cannot uh, decide the uh, interventional uh, approach okay now uh, i think uh, i have lots of questions to ask but the time i have to keep that check now i am coming to a very very important 
question that is about the vaccination see the vaccination has become a bane for indian policy makers from a major donor india was a major donor to poor countries through covax we have become a recipient today and although now the government claims that we will be able to cover the entire country by the december end but why this mess what was the reason can you just highlight uh, about this about uh, about about the vaccine and what is the situation of vaccine and whether what we are doing is correct or not because uh, the reports came uh, day before yesterday in the media that the uh, the who has not approved uh, the the, uh, the our uh, bharat biotech vaccine now those students who have already taken the co uh, that vaccine they are not allowed to go to us and other countries are not accepting uh, to uh, those vaccinated uh, uh, students only the covid shield is approved from the country not even the sputnik is uh, approved till now so when this is a situation why it has happened what is the real reason if you can highlight that also so i think i will not go into why it happened and what were the reasons uh, so much is being discussed i think public knows it better than us uh, everybody is aware and i don't think people will forget this easily uh, you know the whatever happens vaccine was, has become a atlas heel for the for the country and uh, let's not go into details of when the orders were placed uh, why uh, overseas vaccine uh, country uh, the vaccine manufacturers were insisted to do indian trials uh why the uh, literature is not being published about the trials but let's look forward we know that vaccination has been going at a at a pace which is not uh, desirable but i see in the media as you see it that government is expecting about 200 crore vaccines in next 6 months 200 crore vaccine doses in next 6 months i think that is that's very encouraging because uh the, that that is the way forward if we could have done it 6 months back it would have we would have a different way and what is more important is the pace of vaccination should be 100% suppose we are producing 30 lakh vaccines a day we should be injecting 30 lakh vaccines through our hospitals next day and so that vaccines should not be kept in storage because if we keep one vaccine short in in a storage for one day we are exposing one extra person to a covid risk and this is what message must go down that they, we must quickly do it second thing that i want to talk about vaccination is that since there is a a bit of relief from the second wave fortunately with all the lockdowns all over the country we should quickly vaccinate our population and whom should we vaccinate i mean we have to prioritize we cannot have it a first come first get kind of situation prioritize prioritization is required we cannot come under pressure from the demands so i think since it has been established that people who are having the delta variant which is the most prevalent variant in india with one vaccination shot they only 33% protection the government should be looking at changing its policy quickly to reduce the gap between two vaccine shots and those who have received first vaccination shot should be quickly given the second vaccination shot because these people are living in a false hope that they they are they are protected and uh, any further delay or increase in gap now this Do is doctor uh, i have i have to mention this is a very very important point you are raising you are take saying because uh, the other day only the government has mentioned because um, uh, uh, the the our, uh, the famous uh, um, virologist dr fossi has mentioned about this thing from usa and he mentioned about that the gap should be reduced but the government has clarified ki no as per the our expert opinions the gap need not to be reduced and you are saying the gap to be reduced no what i am saying is not about what raman goel is saying it's about the the data that has come 
uh, on research on uh, on delta variant which says that uh, astrazeneca uh, gives 33% protection with first dose and if you take second dose it's somewhere about 65 to 70% so i think uh, at the moment because these are the people who receive the first dose are probably senior citizen or people who are above 45 years with comorbidity these are the people who received vaccination in early phase uh it's it's a good time i'm i'm not about uh, the controversy and being critical of the government they they took a decision when it was required they need to take a decision when it is required now and so this population base it could be 25 crore people or 20 crore people if you remove those who they must be prioritized because they must be protected then uh, then there are many other groups you know our our villages for the first time in our country we should think bottoms up people in the villages do not have access to even testing they do not have access to healthcare and we know it everybody government also acknowledges it there is nothing hidden about it we must prioritize vaccination of our villagers village after village must be covered on vaccination because a city dwelling person can get protected by having access to healthcare facility but people in the villages are dying because lack of facility so i think uh, a serious discussion needs to be done on vaccination prioritization and and who should get it and we should do it at their doorstep i completely agree with the technology and covin but villagers do not have access they don't need, need to register we must go to a village and vaccinate everybody who is ready to get vaccinated or who is ready to be convinced vaccination is the way to save our country and our villages must be saved at, uh, early okay and now uh, one uh, very important question is because it's a public not only public perception but it's a reality it has come in the media several times that the private hospitals were overcharging uh, the patients were overcharging and still they are overcharging and so many bills have been put on the whatsapp also and uh, so many complaints have come how this according to can be controlled because you are also attached with a very reputed private uh, call uh, hospital okay so i think this is a important issue and must be must be put to rest fortunately i don't own a private hospital so i am not here to defend them but i think this is a this is a narrative again to take away focus i'm not saying they are not overcharging we i'll i'll come to that to take away focus from what is happening in public sector hospitals as far as covid management is concerned are we discussing what is happening in a primary health center how they are managing covid patients are we discussing what is happening in a district hospital how they are managing covid patients so completely the public sector healthcare is out of out of media gaze when we we are discussing only the private hospitals so this is one part of it which i will i'll i'll i wanted to emphasize the the second part is that if anybody is overcharging government has mechanisms to take care of of such a such black market yes let let's say why should they be allowed and if since the the administration all over the country are controlling healthcare at the moment why local decisions are not being taken and this is stopped on day 1 the moment the things are reported it need not to even go to the national media because this if this comes in national media it creates a negativity about hospital i am saying they must be taken to task every private hospital is not doing it they are black sheep and they must be taken to task but at the highlighting this leads to a creation of negativity people's perception lot of people are not coming to hospital when they need care because they feel ye to lootte hain no this is 90% not correct this is like saying that every every officer is corrupt or every politician is corrupt or um, uh, every doctor is uh, doing uh, private hospitals majority of them are have been working through thick and thin of covid and have done a wonderful 
service and the very fact that people are trusting private hospital more in india than public sector healthcare is a testimony to that so i don't think this is a major issue mr goyal uh, and it's not about private hospital black marketing of drugs why should it be highlighted i'm not saying hide it i'm saying control it if one chemist or one person is selling a remdesivir in 84000 rupees why that person is not in jail on that day why this needs to wait for 3 months or the media national media to go to a city and find out oxygen cylinders why why i mean when the whole distribution system is controlled by the government how can oxygen cylinder be costing 3000 rupees a, a cylinder refill at that time i'm not talking of now we have mechanism where are the drug inspectors where are the where are the excise inspectors what is their role in the in the covid management or contribution so i think hospital charging drug black marketing of drugs anything this is like a war we keep talking about war if a, there is a national war can the government afford to have black marketing of necessary items no so why why it is being even discussed this must be control in on a city to city basis by the local administration and that should be the end of it okay and now um, before i will go to the final question now one more question today people are now facing the travel ban but they are expecting that the soon once the uh, our patients will be under control the travel ban will be lifted by other countries now there is a talk very much uh, which was opposed by the government of india also about the travel vaccine passport and minimizing about the passport and then what is the condition if even if we will have that uh, those who have been vaccinated what will be the con condition of the quarantine whether it will be uh, when have has to go there and then again has to sit uh, in the uh, hotel room separately for 10 days or will will there be some relief in that what is your opinion about that so i think government has indeed opposed vaccine passport and which is <clears throat> probably uh, for a reason because only about 3 and 1/2% of our population has been vaccinated compared to let's say 50% or more of uk and us and other european countries so uh, this they they find it discriminatory but on the other side they have they have approved vaccine passport for athletes for students traveling abroad so i think they are prioritizing and i i don't blame the government for anything at this moment because they are going through another toughest challenge that any country government has faced especially the indian government at the moment so i think vaccine passport is the is the way ahead and let me tell you the only only place in the world which implemented it first is maharashtra again you know these are the issues which are not discussed maharashtra has a system that if you come from uk i'm talking of uk which is which, which has a maximum problem if you come from uk back to india then you need to go in a institutional quarantine for 7 days but if you have received your vaccination completed at your vaccination you don't need institutional quarantine so there is a vaccine passport which is already working the problem is we do not have a uniform policy so if somebody wants to avoid a institutional quarantine he can land up in let's say in any other airport i i have not done the research but i am aware of people who land in amdabad they are they, somebody from maharashtra they will land in amdabad and they will come by road to mumbai to avoid institutional quarantine now these are the things where a uniform policy and uniform messaging is required and then quarantine has to be effective unfortunately though we are the technology capital of the world we are not using technology to the way it should be used so i was in uk about two months back and i was put in a home quarantine and they asked me to do a do a rt pcr two days after my i land i landed there basically to do genomic sequencing that i have not brought delta uh, variant there so that is one part then every day somebody will call me up on my mobile phone number which they took in advance from me my number and they will correlate it through technology whether the phone is at home when i am receiving it every day without fail at different timings they will call and then one day 
I was busy and I did not take a call. Within half an hour, two police officers landed at the doorstep to check whether I am home. And they were polite enough just to say that we came to find out because you did not receive your phone call. And on day five, they they did another RT PCR to see that I have not got infected in the in the flight, and I was allowed to move out in the society from day six. Now in India, we are being even more stringent. Fourteen days of quarantine, which is not required. So I think a, a rationalization of a vaccine vaccination vaccine passport. and quarantine is the need of the hour and i am sure the government is uh, is uh, people are looking into it okay dr goel you have given all the st uh, straight answers of my straight question but the the billion dollar question which i am sure all our viewers are waiting to know from you how and when covid 19 will get over way forward and normal life when they will go for the normal life everybody wants to know this today so i want we want to know from you how and when covid 19 will get over and what is the way forward and when we will go in a lead a normal life you said billion dollar question so i would be expecting that uh, transfer soon i think it's very important to realize that negativity must go out we should learn from each other's experiences we should learn from science and science should guide us not the narrative obviously everybody knows that covid is not going away covid is not going away but in countries where vaccination has been effectively done so i already mentioned that i was in uk recently they have allowed their citizen to move without mask in open spaces so all over the country you can move around without mask now it is not that their cities are not crowded so if you are in city center there are lots of people but most of the people keep a little away from each other without mask so that can come that will come now they had this condition when i was there that if you are going indoors you have to use mask that has been removed very recently so you can sit inside and you can eat food so i think to answer your question straight vaccination is the key if we believe and i have no reason not to believe that we will 200 dosage of vaccines will be available by 200 crore 200 crore sorry 200 crores 200 crore uh, dosage will be administered not only available they should be administered by the end of this that means about about let's say 60 70 crores will get probably fully vaccinated and others will have first shot i think that is the time when we should be looking at and not only uh, end of december so we should be thinking that what has happened in uk in this april the 12th april they opened up should happen in our country somewhere next march when people have received the second dose of vaccination and especially because we have delta variant primarily so if government is able to ramp up vaccine procurement to 200 crores for next 6 months i am sure they are going to have another 200 to 300 crores vaccine dosage from january to uh, june uh, next year and so march at the earliest or june next year we should be back to normal which means we can we can sit indoors with families with guests in restaurants and and uh, and uh, have life that doesn't mean that covid has gone away that means we are adequately protected as far as the the covid is concerned we may still get infection as i got it after getting my covid vaccination but the infection will be comparatively milder and can be managed early and the, there are talks about the third wave now when we are talking about the third wave because you have mentioned about the march and june next year although there uh, there are uh, the uh, many states says that we will be controlling and once it is controlled they will open everything they will even uh, 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 they will open the restaurants because in india the difference between uk and india and other countries are 
there is no open restaurant as such in the cities they all are indoor outdoor uh, space is not there while in other countries you can sit outside and uh, have food only the take away is there which is allowed still uh, uh, in their lockdown they have allowed the uh, home service so when do you think the third wave can also be controlled with this vaccination plan which you have told so i think we need to understand that how do we prevent disease we all know mask do gaj ki duri and everything but the the learnings that are coming now is that outdoors are safe so if i go on a walk on a beach i don't i should not be asked to wear a mask so outdoors are safe places problem is indoors and if states allow people to in indoor spaces which are air conditioned without adequate ventilation we are going to have a severe third wave so i think that the take home message is i'm not talking advising the government government is governments are wise enough and they have enough information i'm talking of individual citizen take away message is that if the states have allowed you to move out feel free to move out with a good mask maybe double mask because the the disease is still there in the society you can do your works normally do not take off the mask at any given time and the maximum risk is when you sit to drink or eat something with somebody who is not in your bubble or not in your family so if you are going to a restaurant take a table which is far away from other people and sit with only people who 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 are with you all throughout so because you do not know whether you are carrying infection in your nose or the person who is your best friend is carrying infection is in his nose so uh, the way to avoid another wave is to restrict indoor activities as much as possible and that is where the focus should be gyms spas malls swimming pools indoor swimming pools and things like that parties marriages these are the super spreaders and these are these are the places which must go very slow and where we must restrict number of people so if there is a hall for 200 persons we should keep maximum 50 percent so they can be socially distant and ventilation should be there so if it's air condition we should have a we should keep the windows open irrespective of the uh, temperature so i think third wave is likely to come we might have fourth wave also the main thing is with graded lockdown we should not have the severity of second wave this was this is a blot on our 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 face that we lost people uh, who could not be given oxygen in time the severity should not be there third wave nobody can can prevent it can only the severity which can be reduced okay thank you very much uh, dr ramen goyal for giving your very very straight answers to my straight questions i am sure our viewers are quite enlightened and benefited by your answers although uh, you have tried to give all the answers very diplomatically uh, saving the even the government uh, many times of the policies which is in one way is right because what government is doing what is the best for the benefit of the country but one message what dr goel has given is that we as a civil society should also take our responsibility we we should have our own behavior to be improved changed we must wear the mask keep the social distancing hand hygiene etc etc then only we will not be talking about the covid again and again otherwise we will be talking about the covid for the years and years and this will be a very bad blot as dr goel has mentioned on our face thank you very much uh, dr ramen goel uh, for this very good and lighting program and today's program has been uh, live telecasted by v4 news global tv v4 stream malnadu tv india news gaon se samvad sarokar news bharat post and uh, as well as was shown live on facebook and youtube as and our endeavor is to bring to you every day new topic but today, for last four weeks we have started a new program in hindi in the evening that is kal aaj aur kal lal goel ke sang from 4:30 to 5 pm and in which we always talk with a achiever about the their own life journey and today our chief guest is mr p michael veda siromani ies 
former vice chancellor rajiv gandhi national institute of youth development he is also the former additional chief secretary government of kerala so please tune in today at 4:30 pm uh, to view kal aaj aur kal lal goel ke sang thank you very much dr ramen goel for joining us and giving your straight answers and thank you all the viewers for watching our show thank you very much